No one on the radio ever said there was a tornado. The last thing we heard on the radio before the power cut out was that there were straight line winds in St. Peter. Pretty much almost as soon as we turned the radio on, they stopped broadcasting. And we found out later they stopped broadcasting because the antenna had fallen over. Almost as soon as we got down in the basement, the, the edge of the tornado was, was already on us. She was looking out of the south-facing window on second floor comfort. And just as I got to her, she pointed to me and she says, is that a tornado? And I looked and it was just a white wall. And then I told her, yes. And I said, we need to go downstairs now. I remember holding hands with my roommates, sort of praying that, you know, whatever this was, it, it sounded bad. She grabbed a hold of me and I, I grabbed a hold of her and I started thinking, oh, we're going to die together. just looked outside and saw trees down, uh, my car was damaged, and part of the roof of Swedish House had been peeled away like a can opener. So you'd find parts of town a block from us, homes on damage, and then next to it would be something that was totally destroyed. You really had to wonder how we were going to make it. It was as surreal as, as you can imagine, you know. Nothing was where it should be. You go, well, what is that even? How, how did that get here? And, and where's my garage? I remember standing down by the Gustavus sign at the bottom of Old Main Hill and looking up, and it's an entire hill of dirt. It's just dirt. The college that you remember with all the trees on Old Main Hill, it's all gone. None of it was there. It was pretty clear to us the extent of the damage and that the college couldn't recover from us. That was our first thought. I kept waiting for that point, okay, where is the campus not going to be impacted? Where is it not going to be uh, damaged? And, and I was just uh, so surprised, because uh, moving from our home, which was a block from campus, all the way past the chapel, all I could see was the destruction. And of course, speaking of the chapel, was that iconic uh, tower steeple of the chapel uh, being uh, bent in half and uh, falling into the roof, you know, I'll never forget that memory as well. People cried the first time they saw it, cried several times when they saw it. Officials believe two to three hundred homes were damaged in St. Peter, a town of about 10,000 people. The next day, Axel Sawyer had a press conference. He made it absolutely clear Gustavus was going to recover, Gustavus was going to reopen, we were going to finish this academic year. And we're aiming to have an opening after spring break. As you know, we were very fortunate that we had spring break this uh, started last Friday. Uh, I foresee a maximum of two weeks, uh, and we expect to be closed at least this week. This is a new situation. <laughs> the whole school is wrecked. It's like somebody dropped a small a tactical nuclear weapon on it. But we can open it up in a month. <laughs> and it was like, well, some, somebody has to tell them this, this, is, this isn't going to be possible. And, and Owen Samuelson, uh, who was the Vice President for Administration, uh, kind of joined the, the meeting a little bit late and, and, and said, well, you know, you're, you're not going to convince them. And he pulled out a letter from, pulled out a letter from a uh, prospective student that had just committed. I guess Dave was the check for $20 or something, and, and all her reasons for, for being convinced that Miss Davis was a place for her based on the, uh, the uh, recovery things that she was hearing on the, on, the, on the news in the Twin Cities. So he said, you're not going to convince Axel <laughs> that it's anything, but at that time, three weeks probably. It was... Uh, it was a, I don't know, but, uh, just incredibly um, point in time, I think.
20 years later, I think about there were so many people working really hard to make sure that my life went pretty easy, making sure I was fed and a safe place to stay, that I got my mail, that I went to class. And I can only imagine the things that they were going through in their own lives when they would go home, right? And I think I really took that for granted. I think faculty, students, administration, and staff were all determined to make this work. Basically walked around St. Peter with our rakes. So we would just roam from block to block and help people clean up debris um, and clean up leaves and branches and tree trunks and that sort of thing. Um, we ate our lunches from, and dinners from the Red Cross van, so you'd kind of keep an eye out for when the Red Cross van was coming by. I, I, I found very few students who were checked out. In fact, they, 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 they checked in. They were doubly engaged. It was no kind of, oh, my senior year, I'm going to get senioritis, I'll go out drinking and, you know, that kind of stuff. It was, they were checked in and they were very much affected by what was going on. And the person I'm not, I, I can't forget, is the woman who came, whose, whose child hadn't even started Gustavus yet. And she came because she said, I always, I already feel like I'm part of the family, the Gustavus family, I wanted to be here. And we wound up enrolling at that time the largest first year class in the history of the college. We had 710, I think, new students um, come in. Who would ever believe that? The biggest thing about, um, about the tornado was what happened afterwards, because I think the community really, really pulled together. When those those crab apples bloom in the spring, it's just it's that that they were they were blooming that first spring. They were large enough that when they were put in the ground a few weeks later, they started they started blooming, and it was it was a, almost a, a cathartic cathartic moment for for the, those of us on campus that remember the the hill being barren. <laughs> the tornado and the recovery from the tornado created this sort of culture of together, uh, together we can do anything, right? The, this place was nearly wiped out and, and we rebuilt it in three weeks. It took longer than three weeks, but we, we patched it up pretty well. It's such a model for Gustavus as a community. And when people worked together, um, it was with such incredible spirit. It brought the, it brought the community together. There was also a lot of gusty rousers being sung, and um, there was a whole new um, sort of commonality. In many ways, the campus is much more beautiful because of the decisions that were made afterwards because of the rebuilding. It's not about the trees or the brick and mortar, it was the people, it was the people that, uh, that responded in so many wonderful ways. You know, this is what Gustavus did, yes, 20 years ago, but these are the same values and seeing wonderful qualities that are there in, in Gustavus today.